Good morning. The cooler weather must have us all chatty. Uh, what a wonderful, wonderful thing to hear. And personally, wonderful to have cooler weather, if you ask me. Welcome to St. Paul's Cathedral here in Kamloops, BC. Whether you are joining us online this morning, whether this is a place that you find home each week, if this is a place you are at for the first time, or if this is, this is a place that you come um, when you are here in this community of Kamloops. Our service originates on the traditional territory of the Tekamloops Teasequetmik, Kamloops and Area First Nation. And this morning, as generations before us have, we hold those before us who this day grieve, and we hold those before us who this day are affected by fires in our province and beyond, and the smoke that is spreading to different communities. If you are joining us online this morning, you will find the service bulletin in the comments on Facebook connected to the live stream, and you will also find the bulletin on the Cathedral website. For those joining us in person, Communion is shared with both kinds, bread and wine. And just a reminder that communion in one kind, of one kind, is full communion. So please participate as you feel most comfortable. One note um, for the service outlined in our bulletin, Sunday school begins next week during Welcome Back Sunday. So the gathering of the children piece we will skip over this week, but we are well practiced um, for the adjustment in the bulletin for next week. So if you also know people who have young people in their lives, please do let them know that next week Sunday school will begin. The flowers on the altar this morning are in remembrance of Queen Elizabeth. May she rest in peace with all the saints in God's heavenly kingdom. Let us take a moment of silence and hold before us all of those who grieve and all of those who are affected by the forest fires in our province and beyond. Please join us in singing our opening hymn found in your bulletin and on page 408 in common praise, Wind Upon the Water.
In this time and place, we gather in the unceded ancestral lands of the Kamloops, the Shwepnik, Kamloops, and Area First Nations. In this time and place, we meet in the presence of the living God. The living God who creates us and all that is. In this time and place, the risen Christ stands in our midst. In this time and place, God's holy breath, Holy Spirit breathes in, breathes in and through us. The Holy Spirit transforms us and all life. In this time and, pla time and place, together, one people of God. In the name of God, source of all being, the eternal word and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God is with us in our midst and always the love of our beginning and without end. Amen. Amen. We say together the prayer for the season of creation. Creator of all, from your communion of love, your word went forth to create the sympathy of life that sings our praise. By your holy wisdom, you made the earth to bring forth a diversity of creatures who praise you in their being. Day after day, they forth each night after night, they reveal knowledge. You called human beings to till and keep your garden. You placed us in right relationships with each other so that we could listen to their voices and learn how to safeguard the conditions for life. But we turn in on ourselves and away from our creatures. We close our ears to the counsel of your fellow creatures. We fail to listen to the cries of the poor and the needs of the most vulnerable. We silence the voices of those who hold the traditions that teach us to care for the earth. We close our ears to your creative, reconciling, and sustaining word that calls us through scriptures. We lament the loss of our fellow species and their habitats, that they will never speak again. We grieve the loss of human cultures, along with the lives and livelihoods that all have been displaced or perished. Creation cries out as forests crackle, and animals alike flee the fire of injustice that we have lit by our unwillingness to listen. In this season of creation, we pray you that call us as from the burning bush with the sustaining fire of your spirit. Breathe upon us, open our ears, and move our hearts. Turn us from our inward gaze. Teach us to contemplate your creation and listen for the voice of each creature declaring your glory. For faith comes from hearing. Give us hearts to listen for the good news of your promise to renew the face of the earth and enlighten us with the grace to follow the way of Christ as we learn to walk lightly upon his holy ground. Fill us with the hope to quench the fire of injustice with the light of your healing love that sustains our common home. In the name of the one who came to proclaim good news to all creation, Jesus Christ. Amen. And let our colic for this week, let us pray. Almighty God, you call your church to witness that in Christ we are reconciled to you. Help us so to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may turn to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. At that time, it will be said to this people and to Jerusalem, a hot wind comes from me out of the bare heights in the desert 
toward my poor people, not to winnow or cleanse, a wind too strong for that. Now it is I who speak in judgment against them, for my people are foolish. They do not know me. They are stupid children. They have no understanding. They are skilled in doing evil, but do not know how to do good. I looked on the earth, and lo, it was waste and void, and to the heavens, and they had no light. I looked on the mountains, and lo, they were quaking, and all the hills moved to and fro. I looked, and lo, there was no one at all, and all the birds of the air had fled. I looked, and lo, the fruitful land was a desert, and all its cities were laid in ruins before the Lord, before his fierce anger. For thus says the Lord, the whole land shall be a desolation, yet I will not make a full end. Because of this, the earth shall mourn, and the heavens above grow black. For I have spoken, I have purposed, I have not relented, nor will I turn back. Hear what the Spirit says to all people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our reading today, uh, Psalm, is Psalm 14 that we're going to read responsibly. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. All are corrupt and commit abominable acts. There is none who does any good. The Lord looks down from heaven upon us all to see if there is any who is wise, if there is one who seeks after God. Everyone who has proved faithless, all alike have turned bad. There is none who does good, no, not one. Have they no knowledge, all those evildoers? who eat up my people like bread and do not call upon the Lord. See how they tremble with fear, because God is in the company of the righteous. Their aim is to confound the plans of the afflicted, but the Lord is their refuge. Oh, that Israel's deliverance would come out of Zion. The Lord restores the fortunes of his people Jacob will rejoice, and Israel be glad. Our New Testament reading today is a reading from the first letter of Paul to Timothy. I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord, who has strengthened me because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Hear what the Spirit says to all people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn is number 615 in our Book of Common Praise, Just As I Am. We will sing the first three verses before the Gospel and the last two following the Gospel. Just as I am. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable, Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman would, having ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it. When she has found it, she recalls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had just lost. So, just so I tell you that there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark plot to of my mouth and the meditation in all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. You know, sometimes the things that you, when you read the gospel, sometimes things jump out at you that you never noticed before. And it was like, that was in these, in this readings this morning, I realized, I don't know why I didn't know it before, but the tax collectors that um, the parable Jesus told is about the guy who lost the sh one sheep was one of those people in there that owned the sheep. And the woman that lost the coin, was it was her coin. So it's like, so this whole parable is about what's happening in your own house. You know, and so, so the tax collector, so the tax, uh, you know, the sinners and the tax collectors, the Pharisees and the scribes are sitting there gossiping about who Jesus was sitting with. And they kind of, they were kind of, so this parables were told to, to awaken them up to that they're destroying their house from the inside out. If you sit there and gossip and do that and do this whole thing about, uh, if you're complaining. So it is about who they are as a community. And so I found that really interesting. I hadn't noticed that before. And this parable always reminds me of something. Now I just have a weird mind that just wanders off and kind of gets, I read something and then it just gives me an idea and then I go with it. Might not make sense to you, but it makes perfectly good sense in my head. <laughs> but a few years ago, a few years ago in Thailand, when those that soccer team, those those 12 boys and their 25-year-old coach were caught in that cave in, in Thailand. 
and the whole world just was mesmerized by the rescue effort. And there was people from all over the world that got together to help rescue these, these, eight, these uh, 13 people in these caves. And there's a, now there's several movies out. There's a movie on the 13, I think, which is on Prime, and there's another one on Netflix about, about the whole process of how they saved these kids. And I was mesmerized by it, the whole story. It was so fascinating that these boys sat in this cave in this dark, and I'm talking dark, because they were two kilometers inside this cave and there was no light. So it's a darkness that none of us have probably have ever experienced much in our life. You know, so it would be not, it would be not recognizable. And the only way that I could ever compare it to is when the days when I welded and I worked in a shipyard and I was in, the, I was in the welding the keels and you're in a three by three square thing welding and it, in the keel of a ship and it's absolutely dark. There's not nothing, not even a crack of light gets in. And it was, and, and I, and so that was my only reference point for, to understand what these, these young people were going through. And their teacher there, who was only 25 at the time, he was smart enough, he was a Buddhist, and he decided to teach them how to meditate. He taught these young kids to meditate and so that they would slow their, they would keep them calm through this whole process. And it was amazing that they all got saved out of there. And the world celebrated, so much people celebrated them with just so much joy. The world was mesmerized, the country was mesmerized, the, you know, the, the Thai, they weren't from Thailand, they were from another country, and the Thai government made them all citizens to honor these, this, these young people. Nobody said to the teacher, what the heck were you in there for in the first place? They just celebrated their savior. They got saved. And even though two of the, two of the Navy SEALs, one of the Navy SEALs died during the rescue mission, the Thai, re the Thai Navy SEAL, and one died later from an infection he got from the caves, were still, they, they saved these kids. And everybody rejoiced. And at the same time, at that exact same time, in a world away, in the southern United States along the Mexican border, and all of those refugees that were trying to cross the border and the southern refugees, the kids were put in cages. This is how, they didn't know how to handle it. They, and I, this, isn't about, this isn't about circumstances, this is about how we treat people. This is about, and they were putting these kids in cages there, and they were kind of, and they were separating them from their family, taking these kids from their family. And both of them, and all of these kids were just, people, families were displaced, and all these things were happening at the same time. Whether you believe what it was the right thing or do not, it is, in my, in my humble opinion, it was totally wrong. It was poor judgment, whoever thought that that was a good idea. But what I wanted to talk about was the trauma that these, both of these people, both of these children suffered trauma. The kids in Thailand, that was, their, that was a traumatizing experience. And the kids at the southern border was a traumatizing experience. And so, and who do you think would, would, would have the resilience to get over that? The people that were rejoiced at the being re removed from that cave, those kids that were rejoiced, or the ones where people who constantly live in fear because somebody's going to come and take them away again. These are both acts of trauma. Some are a conscious effort, some are not. But I think it says that, that this, you know, in this reading, gospel reading, he's talking about that we can do things that affect people without 
even thinking that we do it. We, th we don't even think about how we do it. We think it's about the right thing to do. And because somebody thinks, doesn't think it all through, we, we create things. I mean, this is how the residential schools were started. And all the, the trauma that we created that, that somebody thought it was a good idea at the time. And years back, we'd look at it and we'd go. And so, I, so this, this message is really not so much about, not so much about who we are, but how we respond to the world, how we respond to what's right. And what does that in our hearts, because it's what's in our hearts that does create an, the community we live in. It's what's in our heart that we pour out to a community that makes a difference in our world. And it's what's in our heart that changes the world and changes the community we live in. We don't always have to agree, that's fine. I don't always agree. I don't always agree with myself. <laughs> but I also know that caring about people and caring about each other is really at the heart of who we are as a community. And it's how we grow as a community together. It's how we knit ourselves together in Christ's community. And it which makes us stronger. And so as Jesus rejoices in these, in his parable, he talks about us rejoice. It's about bringing hope to each other, bringing hope to a community, always bringing hope in the worst, in sometimes the worst times of our lives, we need to hear that hope. We need hope in those times in our life when we struggle, when we, we get into a place where we, we don't know. Because we don't know who struggles and who doesn't struggle. But at the end of the day, it's like who looks to them in the eye and says something nice to them that they would, says something to them to build them up that they always remember. Amen. Let us please stand as you are able and let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please take a position of prayer to which you're accustomed. We're using prayers that are following the theme of the season of creation, which lasts through September and early October, as adopted by the General Synod this past summer. These creation prayers are adapted from a prayer written by Pope Francis. As you can tell, I'm not Margaret. I am gifted with the opportunity to use prayers uh, that Margaret um, put together. and. Um, I offer them with her today. Creator God, we thank you that you have made us in your own image and has, have given us gifts in mind, body, and spirit. We thank you now for Queen Elizabeth, 
for her life and witness and what she meant to each of us. We give thanks for her steadfast faith in Jesus, which sustained her throughout her earthly life. We pray for her children, her grandchildren, and her great-grandchildren. We pray for their comfort and peace in this time of their mourning. As we honor her memory, make us more aware that you are the one from whom comes every perfect gift, including the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> when I say, God our creator, would you please respond with, hear our prayer. Let us pray with confidence to the Lord saying, God our creator, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray in thanksgiving for Mother Earth, in whom all life is rooted. Brother Sun, whose energy radiates life. Sister Water, who nurtures and revives us. And co-creatures with whom we live and for whom we are called to till and keep this garden. God, our creator, Amen. hear our prayer. God of all creation, we ask your protection for all who travel, particularly for Maxwell and Christine, who have been with us in worship for some time now and return shortly to Sri Lanka. We pray safe travels for our friends. God, our creator, hear our prayer. All powerful God, you are present in the whole universe and in the smallest of your creatures. You embrace with your tenderness all that exists. Pour out upon us the power of your love that we may protect life and beauty. Fill us with peace that we may live as brothers and sisters, harming no one. God, our creator, hear our prayer. God of the poor, help us to rescue the abandoned and the forgotten of this earth, so precious in your eyes. Bring healing to our lives, that we may protect the world and not prey on it, that we may sow beauty, not pollution and destruction. Touch the hearts of those who look only for gain at the expense of the poor and the earth. God, our creator, Hear our prayer. Teach us to discover the worth of each living thing, to be filled with awe and contemplation, and to recognize that we are profoundly united with every creature as we journey towards your infinite light. God, our creator, hear our prayer. We thank you for being with us each day. Encourage us, we pray, in our struggle for justice, love, and peace. Holy and compassionate God, with other Anglicans around the world, we pray for you, to, do, to you today for the Church of Bangladesh, its bishops, clergy, and people. We pray for all who lead and minister in Christ's name, especially our primate Linda, our Archbishop Lynn, Assisting Bishop for the Territory of the People, Jane. We pray for our Cathedral Clergy, Lynn, Bishop Gordon, Barbara Leotskis, Bob Purdy, Sandra Sugden, Dan Hines, for our Hospital Chaplain, Victor, and for all lay leaders and their ministry to us. We pray especially for the Reverend Dr. Kyle Norman, who is preparing to begin his ministry as our rector and dean in October, for his family as they settle into a new life in Kamloops. We pray for all ministers of the gospel that you would bless and guide them in their ministries. God, our creator, hear our prayer. We remember in our prayers our sister diocese of Montreal, for Bishop Mary, Archdeacon Robert Kamara, 
the Synod office and staff. We pray especially for Randy Gates preparing for ordination. In our territory prayers, we remember the people of the Robson Valley Anglican United Shared Ministry for the Reverend Dee McEachran and diaconal minister Jim Mc Kim McNaughton, her husband Ken, and their families. God our Creator, hear our prayer. Creator God, we give thanks for the people of this parish, for their ministry to us and their presence among us. Today, we especially pray for Tammy Davis and Richard Arnold, Mark and Janet de, de Guglielmo, Rose Delap, Dave and Mary Rolston, Jim Rudy, Chris and Gina Rose, and their families. We also pray for Ken and Kathy as they prepare to move to Summerland. God, our Creator, hear our prayer. Today we pray for all who need the healing touch of Jesus, especially those for whom we, we have brought here today in our hearts, or whose names have been placed in the prayer bowl on the altar. We pray for any others who we may wish to name silently or aloud. We pray today for all who died and for those who survived at the U.S. World Trade Center on September the 11th, 2001, and for whose lives have been changed forever by this tragic event. God of those who grieve and mourn, we pray for all who have died and who may be on our hearts today for Elizabeth, for James, for Grace, for Kel, for Lisa, God our Creator, hear our prayer. Finally, in a moment of quiet, let us each bring our own cares and needs before our loving God. God, our Creator, hear our prayer. God, our Creator, we thank you that you know our needs before we even ask, and that you know all the circumstances hidden from us. Grant our prayers as may be best for us, according to your will. And all these things we ask through the love of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in wisdom. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you, thought, word, and deed, by what we have done. By what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us, let us pass the peace remembering our uh, COVID restrictions.
Holy God, accept all we offer you this day, and may we who are reconciled at this table bring wholeness to, ye, to our broken world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're using Eucharistic prayer number five, or four, I mean. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise. It is right to give you thanks and praise, O Lord, our God, sustainer of the universe. You are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expansion of interstellar space galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. Glory to you forever. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. 
You made us the stewards of creation. Glory to you forever and ever. But we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again you call us to return. Through the prophets and sages you reveal your righteous law. In the fullness of time you sent your son, born of a woman, to be our savior. He was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our inequities. By his death, he opened to us a way of freedom and peace. Glory to you forever and ever. Therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Blessed are you, Lord our God, for sending us Jesus the Christ, who in the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, take this and eat it. This is my body which was given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup of wine he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Glory to you forever and ever. Gracious God, we recall the death of your Son, Jesus Christ. We proclaim his resurrection and ascension. And then we look for it with the expectation for his coming as Lord of all the nations. We who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring you these gifts and send your poor Holy Spirit upon us and upon the offering of this holy church, that we, may, that we who eat and drink at this table may share the divine life of Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And pour out your spirit upon the whole church and make it your new creation, gathering your church together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom, where peace and justice are revealed, that we, with all your people of every language, race, and nation, may share the banquet you have promised. And through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, creator of all. Glory to you forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior has taught us, let us pray.
Dear friends, I invite you in this moment, wherever you may be, to receive Christ in communion with the saints and the gathering of God's people, unseen and yet present with us now. Many are made one. We receive you, Lord Jesus Christ. We welcome your presence in us and to together proclaim our love for you with our hearts, minds, our souls, and our strength. With the saints, we worship you. With the angels, we adore you. With your whole church, we proclaim your reign. Come to us, O oh many, and make us one.
Let us pray. God of peace, in this Eucharist we have been reconciled to you and to our neighbors. May we who have been nourished by holy things may have the courage to forgive. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. And glory to God. This is the power of the Please be seated for the announcements. Thank you to all those who have participated in leadership this morning. There are a number of announcements in your bulletin and I'm not going to repeat those ones as there are a number of announcements that are not in the bulletin or that need to be highlighted. There may be some things um, coming up in the next few weeks or the next months, and those we will send out in the parish email this week um, just to help us with time this morning. This evening, we invite you to gather here in this space at 7 p.m. for a service of remembrance for Queen Elizabeth, and I believe Bishop Jane will be here um, for that. There is also a guest book at the front with her picture, that we invite you to sign. This upcoming Friday, September 16th, we have Friday Family Food and Fun, the first gathering for the school year. And you can look for more information on the website and Facebook page, and that's at 5 p.m. We do need pre-registration for that. That's for families with young children, so share that information widely if you know of anyone. Soul Friends has their kickoff retreat at Shushwap Lake. Uh, Living Beautifully with Uncertainty is its title. This is taking place on Thursday, September 22nd from 10.30 a.m. until 3.15 p.m. There is an option to carpool and all are welcome, but there is also limited space. So pre-registration is required and David Lidster and Barb Oscos are both here. They're, um, at the back of the church. And I'm sure if you have questions or would like to communicate with them about attending, you can talk to them today or send an email to the office and we can forward it on to them. As mentioned earlier, Sunday school begins next week during the 10 a.m. service and there will be ice cream Sundays for our welcome back Sunday. In the season of creation, uh, we invite you to join us this Thursday, September 15th at 12.15 here in the cathedral for a lecture with the Reverend Ken Gray titled Creation, Community, and a Recent Trip to Ireland. Um, the complete description of this lecture will be emailed out in the next day or two and a light lunch will follow. So please do join us for that. And next Sunday, September 18th at 1 p.m. at Dufferin, Wet Dufferin Wetlands Park, we invite you to join us for Wild Church. Um, with the Wild Church group there. Ken Gray has an announcement. I'm seeing lots of waving hands. We're gonna have lots of announcements. Ken Gray and then Barb. Okay. Do you wanna come? Thanks. 
Good morning, friends. Not this week, not the following week, but the following week, 17 of us are walking as pilgrims at the Sorrento Centre, and we still have three spaces available. I would love to get that number up to 20. Katharina from uh, the cathedral is coming. I think she's the only parishioner thus far, so I'm hunting for three more participants who would like to walk on day one up to the Adams River, on day two over to Harold Park, or around Harold Park, I mean, including Margaret Falls, and third day, we haven't quite decided yet. Our uh, tour leader, well, I guess I'm the tour leader, but Phil McIntyre Paul, who a number of you know, has put together a wonderful set of treks for us, and uh, it'll be a wonderful time, so I hope you can join us. One or two people, definitely Verna Albright was one who had expressed an interest in being an adjunct member. Talk to me afterwards. I. I they wouldn't do the full walk, but would be involved in the community building programs in the morning and the evening. So talk to me if you're interested. Thanks for your time. Just a quick reminder that there is a wonderful concert on Tuesday night here at 7 p.m. with the Common Cup Company and it's a fundraiser for Out of the Cold. So it'll be a great evening. See you then. <laughs> and that one is no pre-registration required, um, but tickets at the door with the option of pre-registering and that link has been emailed out. Len. First, I'd like to say uh, something about Maxwell and Christine. They're leaving us. This is their last Sunday with us, and they're going to uh, and they're going back to Sri Lanka. And we've had the pleasure of them being part of our congregation all summer. So thank you so much for being and have a safe journey. Home. And if you so choose, you can follow us on Facebook and see our, watch our Sunday services here too. I, I think it's 12 hour time difference, so. Anyways, I, I, I wanted to make a, uh, since I came here as interim, Claire has been, Claire has been uh, the church secretary and she's been the church secretary here for the last eight years. And she's does a wonderful job. And you know, and, and Claire knows because I go in there and whine to her all the time and she's so pastoral, she sits there and listens to me complain about, uh, you know. And so I think it's, and now she's taken a new position up upstairs and I'm so grateful for her because uh, she has all these wonderful skills that we have yet to see. And so I think that she's been a, such a blessing here over the years and people don't, as a, as a priest, I'm, I'm always reminded that um, how important the set church secretary is, how important that they are the first line of pastoral care, always. When people phone the church, they need a voice, that they need somebody to answer the phone that, that cares about who they are on the other end of the phone. And so Claire does an awesome job at that. And so she, uh, and she's done a wonderful job. So we're celebrating her today. And so we, brought, we have a little something for you, Claire, so please come on up here. I know you don't want to come up here and do anything, but well, you got your mask on so nobody can see your face. This is a little appreciation for all you've done for us over the years. I know you'll still be around, but. Yeah, you can complain to me closer than you did before. I know, pretty soon not at all. Um, that'd be sad for me, not for you. Thank you very much. This is embarrassing. And I'm just upstairs if you need me. Come and say hi. And yeah. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And with that in mind, we do invite all of you to join us in the hall after the service. You can access the hall um, outside down Nicholas Street in the last door or through this archway on your right. Um, and then onwards to the hall. 
And there's a finger food lunch and coffee and cake and lots of lovely people to have conversation with as we gather together and be together and also celebrate Claire and give thanks for her um, ministry with us at the cathedral. Please join us in our closing hymn, Draw the Circle Wide, found in your bulletin and in more voices on page 145. Instead of a prelude today, please turn to 660 in your Common Praise hymn books. And we will sing God Save Our Gracious King. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.